So imagine I met you in a bodega, you're Filipino. I was like, would you like to come to my restaurant? And I had fake menus, uh, rather, you know, menus, and I faked a restaurant funk, cocktail bar. What I began to realize is that we were practicing, we were rehearsing. We were what Malcolm Gladwell might call outlying. It's all the sacrifices that you make, and it's usually for yourself. Personal sacrifices that you would never want to share. Like, if I were to tell my mom what I had to go through to get to where I'm at, she'll be like, why did I come to this country? Like, why did I work so hard? There's no manual that says, how do you open a crossover Filipino restaurant? Or how do you make it to year three? So I had to split the conversation. How do you run a restaurant? And then how do you represent Filipino food? First off, Filipino food is from your home. You know, the 7,107 islands and everybody claims to have the best adobo. But nobody's adobo is better than my Lola, right? Or your Lola. I just realized that, why don't I make this food? It's the one that resonates to me the most. It's the one that I have infinite memories of. I think the impact of Filipino food becoming popular is just almost justifying our culture. And he was an advisor and he looked us up and down, he looked at all of us and said, technically you guys should fail. You should not exist. Your friends, family, relatives, in relationships, you have no money, you're people of color. In the food industry, trying to do Filipino food. Response was, not interested, slam a door in your face. Not interested, don't return phone calls. There was no one, no one believed. My mother said, do not come home. Everyone told me I couldn't do it. From the beginning. My mom was like, you can't do that. I was like, watch me. If I could do fine dining, I could make a sandwich. Next thing you know, like, everyone wanted to talk to me. Within, what, six months, we were able to operate? Seven days a week. Seven days a week. I don't know what happened. It was uh, remarkable. It wound up being two-month wait for a reservation. Literally overnight. The key to everyone's heart is to their stomach. And in order for us to like be accepted and not be considered third world minority, our food has to speak volumes. Jonathan Gold solidified it, the Savour. They wrote a really great article on New York Times has been blowing up the Filipino food scene. Bon Appetit top 50 restaurants, two of them are Filipino restaurants. We have the best talent in the world. We're in the middle of the bridge to cross over. We're there. Will the bridge fall is the question. And that's up to us.